Hey guys, it's Leo. Welcome back or welcome if you are new and welcome to my June wrap up except we do it how we always do it here from worst to best. I didn't quite realise that I completely forgot to do a May wrap up. I don't know why it just didn't happen so my apologies for that but we are back with a June wrap up. I have missed honestly doing these videos. I love going through all of the books that I love during a month but equally all of the ones that I didn't and like kind of working our way up. It is a little bit fun except in June. June maybe was the worst reading month I've had all year. Yeah. In June I was definitely experiencing a little bit of a reading slump but equally just a little bit of a life slump if I'm being honest. I did end up reading seven books so I don't want to say that I was in like a big reading slump. I clearly wasn't but the majority of the books that I did read in June took me at least a month to get through which is quite shocking because some of them were literally a hundred pages. <laughs> it just wasn't a great reading month. I definitely have so much more hope for July. I'm already looking forward to July's reading wrap up. We are going to get straight on into it. Going from worst to best here are the seven books that I read in June. The worst that I read in June is a book that I do not own and honestly off the top of my head currently I cannot even remember who wrote it. I'm so sorry. I will obviously have the picture on screen but I never heard about this book before and I didn't know how famous of a short story it was. We received a collection of this author's short stories into work and one of my colleagues was like oh my god I need to read this short story right now so we ended up buddy reading it at work. The story is 20 pages long and it is called I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. Honestly one of the best titles I have ever had in my entire life. I went into this with absolutely no expectation because I'd never heard of it before. I'd never heard of the author before and I very much felt like I was living under a rock. Currently this short story and this author is quite well known. I had absolutely no idea babe so I went into it no expectations. Do I think for better or for worse that impacted my reading experience? Yeah probably. This story is extremely speculative. It has notes towards sci-fi and AI and for that it was fascinating. This is a story that was written in the 60s but the nods towards AI and obviously now reading it from a modern perspective where AI is very much developing. Absolutely terrifying because it felt so familiar and so possible. Like it didn't quite feel like it was sci-fi. It felt like it could actually happen in real life. Obviously it's 20 pages. So if you are gonna read it, all you should go into it knowing is that there are like five people, I think, and something called Am. Am is this piece of technology that very much controls them makes them submissive. It was weird. It was definitely quite gruesome in places, definitely also slightly misogynistic, which is definitely a product of its time. I mean, again, it was published in the 60s. The so reading this now in our society today was fascinating. And for that, I ended up rating it three stars. As I said, for better or for worse, I had no expectations for this and I have no backstory surrounding the short story. Maybe for better or for worse, again, it would have impacted my rating. Based on the short story alone, I ended up rating it three stars. It was interesting. I am happy Happy that I read it. The worst next book that I read is one that actually makes me quite sad because it is one that I had on my physical TBR for a while. It was absolutely a five-star prediction for me. And that was The Country Will Bring Us No Peace by Matra Simard. I kept speaking about this in so many videos, in so many TBR videos, in like my summer TBR video and books that I wanted to read this year. And unfortunately, it was a little bit disappointing to me. And again, it's a very speculative read. I absolutely adore a good speculative read. But as much as I adore speculativeness in fiction, I need a little bit more. I do need a little bit of plot. I do need a little bit of a slight explanation. I don't ask for a lot. I love ambiguous endings. I do like knowing what is happening to a certain extent and with this I feel like it was perfect in so many ways, so many forms, but I just wish there was more plot. In The Country Will Bring Us No Peace we are essentially following this couple who are having troubles conceiving a child so they decide to go to the countryside to conceive a child. What we slowly find out as we develop into this novel is that grief plays a huge part into this couple's life and the town that they are in and just the world in this in general like it feels so claustrophobic. I do think that Matthew Simard and the translator did such an excellent job at making the countryside feel so othered and feel like its own little planet. I absolutely love books that really delve into the countryside and into nature and this did this perfectly. For that it would have been a five star. I really enjoyed the exploration of characters in this specifically when it came to the couple especially in their grief and how they dealt with their grief together but also individually and how grief never looks the same for anyone. It was such a fascinating story. I loved the eeriness and the atmosphere in this again would have been five stars absolutely. It felt so melancholic, so claustrophobic, so eerie. This is definitely one that I would recommend towards autumn in my opinion or genuinely if there was like a summer thunderstorm you could easily binge read this in one night and it is just so atmospheric. It is such a good read but I do 
do wish there was a little bit more plot. I did initially end up rating this three stars, but sitting here now kind of talking about it and having sat with it myself a little bit longer, I do think 3.5 more, actually 3.75, if I was going to be picky, be more the rating for me. I would still definitely recommend it. It just did disappoint me slightly, but I did have very high expectations for it. The next book that I would put in this ranking was yet another five star prediction that was in the three star range, and that was The Invention of Morale by Adolfo Bio Casar. I was so excited to read this. I have been so excited to read this for years. It is literally a 100 page novella. It is tiny. My reasons for such excitement was so many people compared it to I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman, which is obviously one of my favourite books of all time. And I would say if you're going to pick it up like me, that wasn't my sole reason for picking this up I also had so many people in my real life and also online recommending this to me they thought I would really like it if you are going to pick it up solely because people have compared it to I who have never known men do note it is extremely different like extremely different in my opinion the only sort of similarity was that again it was another really speculative read where you really do have to decide for yourself what is happening I do recommend going into this one if you are going to pick it up knowing as little as possible one again it's speculative two it is so extremely short so you can easily get spoiled for it but it did definitely let me down it was nowhere near a five star like I thought it would be there were definitely some quotes in here that I thought were extremely beautiful but all in all considering it as a book that is 100 pages I did find it slightly dragging which was a huge shame like you don't want that with a book in general let alone one that you should genuinely be able to read in like one sitting it is intense and heavy and again quite melancholic and claustrophobic but in a very different sense to the country will bring us no peace and I who have never known men I am still really happy that I finally read this it definitely has so many nods to a lot of the speculative fiction that I absolutely love I do feel like a lot of inspiration was probably drawn from this so I am happy that I read it it just was not a favorite and again I rated it three and a half stars happy that I read it. Another unfortunate disappointment for me in June was Milk Fed by Melissa Broda. This one actually kind of hurt. I have spoken about Melissa Broda so many times so far this year. She is an author who I have had on my radar for years ever since she published her first book. I knew I wanted to read it. I had finally read my first Melissa Broda with Death Valley earlier this year. Still it is one of the best books I've read so far this year. A six out of five star read for me. Because of that and the fact that I was already excited to read her backlist, I decided to go for Milk Fed next. I am not gonna lie, this took me a month a month to read it was a lot and i don't know why this i would say is probably the reason that i started slumping in june which is such a shame i absolutely want to preface that i don't think that that should discredit this book this book was still great and so good and i still 100 recommend it for me i just think that i picked it up at the wrong time i think in june i just needed fun silly goofy reads and i didn't really have that at all so it kind of made me slump in milk fed though we are following 24 year old rachel and she is a little bit of an interesting character she has a really Really complicated relationship with food and calorie intake I would say that that is absolutely a trigger warning in this it doesn't really hold back in that aspect which definitely initially made it quite a heavy read but as the story progresses we are also following her progression in the way that she feels about food and desire and sex in the way that she feels in life in general she has some intense mummy issues intense mummy issues if you have mummy issues maybe read this book but like it was a lot. I absolutely want to emphasize that I love the way that Melissa Broder writes and that might be quite contradictory because I did say that this put me in a little bit of a reading slump but that is not her fault. That was all me babe. Pisces by Melissa Broder which is actually behind me here is on my July TBR so it is one that I'm going to read this month and honestly I'm praying it's going to be a five star. This one for me unfortunately just did let me down slightly. I do think that I would love to do a reread when I am in the mood for it. But on a first read I did end up rating it three and a half stars. Then we have the last physical book that I read in June. I really did not read too many books on my physical TBR considering I read seven four of them were on my physical TBR So I am happy that at least half were on my physical TBR and I actually already own them But some of them weren't and this is the last one all of the best books that I read in June I didn't even own the next one is and none of this is true by Lisa Jewell This is a thriller that I have had on my TBR for a year I heard so many people last year saying it was their favorite thriller that they absolutely loved it and do I agree with that yes do I see that absolutely this ended up being four stars for me i had read a couple of lisa jewel books in the past before they got really hyped on book talk i kind of had a little bit of a thriller era a couple of years ago where i just binge read a shit ton of adult thrillers but this 
this was the first thriller recently that I was actually able to stick out. Before this, I tried reading two thrillers that I ended up DNFing. So I was actually quite pleasantly surprised that in June I ended up having the attention span for this. And I would say this is the best Lisa Jewel that I have read. None of this is true. We are following Josie. It is her birthday and she goes into a restaurant with her husband and then she stumbles across Alex, who is also there for her birthday. They find out they are birthday twins. Alex is a podcaster. She's quite a well-known podcaster. And Josie just kind of takes it upon herself to interweave her way into her life until she makes a podcast about Josie's life. Very interesting. Her life, my babe went through a lot. Again, another one that I think you should definitely go into knowing as little as possible, but I will say the unreliable narrator in this made it such a good read, such a compelling read. I did not want to put it down, like genuinely every single opportunity I had to read this, I was reading it. Definitely did have quite a couple of gripes when it came to this book, some things that I really did not like, which absolutely diminished the star rating for me. How to say it without giving spoilers, I would say Josie's husband, if you have read this book, in terms of their age and the way that their relationship began, I absolutely despised how every single character in this book brushed it off and just did not acknowledge it. I did go into specifics on my Goodreads review. It's spoilers, but you click on the spoiler if you want to see it, you don't see it if you don't. But if you want to know specifically what I mean, go on to my goodreads but that i really hated and it definitely diminished the book a little bit for me but overall this is absolutely such a solid thriller would 100 percent recommend if you want a thriller for the summer it was such a page turner i really really enjoyed it four stars on to the last two books that i read in june we have recitative by tony morrison this book was absolutely phenomenal this was a short story it was the only short story that tony morrison had ever written prior to this i had only read the bluest eye by tony morrison i do absolutely want to read everything she has ever published i do think other than recitative i am going to go in chronological order this is a short story oh my god I knew I had to read it I've been wanting to read it ever since it was published so many people were talking about it when it first came out I always wanted to read it I kind of wanted to wait until the paperback came out then I saw the deal on kindle bought it binge read it in one sitting so good. If you have never heard about this short story before, we are essentially following two young girls. They kind of meet in an orphanage situation when they are eight years old. One of them is black, one of them is white, but we are never told who is the white girl and who is the black girl. We as the reader are very much left reading the entire short story, trying to distinguish who is who based on microaggressions, based on racism in the book, based on how these two people live. I find it so fascinating and I think it is so geniusly written to the point that every single person who reads this book is definitely going to have a different opinion based on their own pre-assumptions on race, their own upbringing. It was so fascinating and Toni Morrison is just a genius. She was a genius at her craft, like she's one of the best writers for a reason. I am now dying to read even more from her than I even was previously and I'm just so excited. Like this book left me reeling, I just thought it was absolute genius. If you have not read this short story before, if it's not your normal sort of read, I definitely would absolutely urge you to pick it up anyway it is a short story like you will read it in one sitting you'll read it in 20 minutes i cannot stress enough how incredible this was i still think about it now i definitely want to do a reread i feel like every reread you would have would give a different opinion i just yeah it was phenomenal i didn't really know what to rate it in the end because i do struggle to kind of give short stories like one singular short story a rating kind of like i have no mouth and i must scream but in the end i did give it a 4.5 star rating honestly it would be a five star it was phenomenal 10 out of 10 recommend. And then last but certainly not least, the best book that I read in June was Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. This book slowly snuck up on me. I had seen a handful of people previously read it and recommend it, especially ones that have similar taste to me, and they really enjoyed it. I always knew it was one that I would be quite interested to read. I was never 100% sold in it. I didn't honestly really know what it was about at all, and then I got it on Kindle, and again, I kind of binge read it. This book was phenomenal. It was so melancholic. It was so astonishing, so hot breaking honestly i cried nearly at the end i absolutely cannot believe how much i ended up loving this story in it we are basically following this 14 year old girl who is a ghost start the book and we don't know how she has become a ghost we don't know what her life was like we don't know how she died we just know that she is a ghost and she is looking upon all of these people living their lives and especially women starts having this absolute infatuation with novelist george sand i honestly did not know anything about george sand prior to reading this book obviously because of that i don't 100 know how historically accurate 
accurate it is. I definitely am intrigued to find out now because of how much I loved it. But our protagonist, who is a ghost, has this absolute infatuation with George Sand. And then we then get the perspective and the POV of George as she lives her life. It is such a heartbreaking read, such a powerful one, such a solemn one, such a quiet one. But one that left such an impact, I definitely would recommend this for the summer. If you want a good, impactful, like, literary fiction, definitely read this for the summer. I absolutely love, like, one of my favourite things in fiction is reading from the perspective of a ghost. Or just really interesting narratives like that are always so much more impactful for me, and I just adore adored it. The writing style too was absolutely astonishing. The way that we were so transported back into time was just mind-blowing. This one I feel like is quite underrated and I absolutely would recommend it to you. I did end up rating it 4.5 stars. I just, yeah, absolutely adored it. That was definitely the best book that I read in June. But yeah, guys, those were the seven books that I read in June. I feel like this was a very quick, short sort of wrap-up, but honestly, it's quite nice to be back doing a monthly wrap-up. As always, if you have read any of the books that I also read in this video, if you agree with my opinions if you disagree definitely let me know equally let me know what your favorite book that you read in june was or if you stayed until the very end of the video but you don't really know what to comment comment a fruit emoji because on the cover of briefly a delicious life there is a fruit why not but yeah guys thank you so much as always for being here and for spending some time with me i hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you again really soon in another video mm -hmm.